Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you, good morning, and welcome back to the channel where today you join me for a legendary trip to visit the home of Automobili Lamborghini. This is their factory near to Bologna in Italy. And today we're gonna to be seeing some of the rarest Lambos in the world. You can see some of the cars departing out behind me, but I'm here with Asphalt 9 Legends, and we're gonna be heading into the Ad Personum studio as well to configure my dream Aventador SVJ. Maybe one day that might happen for now though, we've also got some particularly special cars to check out, including the Terzo Millenio. So let's get today started. It just so happens that we can get the day rolling in the best possible way because right outside the front door, we have one of the new Aventador SVJ Coupes. So limited to just 900 cars, it now has 770 horsepower. This is the track-focused raging bull, but it mixes in the technology from the Aventador S, crazy aerodynamics. Look at the rear wing here with Lamborghini's ALA 2.0. It brings air through here in the back and out on the underside of the wing to kind of control the torque vectoring by aero. It has new exhaust pipes here in the center, well one on either side, aggressive diffuser, and this just looks like a real and proper Lamborghini. And we'll take a better look at one, I think, a little bit later on. But for now, let's head over to the museum, because I want to show you some of the really rare cars that are inside there. Now you'll have to stay tuned to see the Terzo Millenio later. We're going to get a private viewing of it in its own room. But while we're here in the museum, we've got the likes of the Aventador from Batman Dark Knight Rises. In the corner over there, is a Lamborghini Veneno. We'll come back and take a look at that. We've also got the LP670 Super Veloce here, but let's head upstairs and start up there. The variety in here is great. You've got some of the current production cars, you've got the Lamborghini race cars, you have concept cars, there's a Lamborghini Formula One car, some of their classic cars, the super special limited edition cars, and if we come on upstairs, two of those that I'd like to take a look at are right in front of us. We've got the Centenario, and the Sesto Elemento. So let's start here because this is really quite a unicorn. They only built a very small number of them. Sesto Elemento is literally the Italian for sixth element. It was based on the Gallardo at the time with the V10, but it came in at under one ton. So it's all carbon fiber, the sixth element, the entirety of the car, the body, the underpinnings, you name it, hence the lightweight. And if we come around towards the side, it's totally stripped out. There isn't even really a dashboard inside here. It's just foam pad on a tub with a steering wheel. It's obviously a track car, it's not road legal. I think they were going to build up to 20 of them, but it was really, I mean, it's a proper Lamborghini, right? A special series as it was designed and intended. And then on this side, we have the Centenario based on the Aventador platform. They built 20 coupes and 20 roadsters. You can pretty much name your price. In fact, with both of these, we're talking millions and millions of euros. This car has a complete visible carbon fiber body, the glossy carbon fiber finish, 770 horsepower from the 6.5 liter naturally aspirated V12. Just come and have a look at the radical design and styling of this. Named Centenario because it was launched at what would have been Ferruccio Lamborghini's 100th birthday. But just coming down towards the back, look at how wide those rear tires are and also how exposed they are. So both of those are Lamborghini's really top end limited edition products. They are crazy in design, performance, everything they represent. But also have a look around here at some of the history of Lamborghini from the Yalpa. We've got the Silhouette, we've got an Araco, we've got a 350 GT. We've got the Mura, which I think really defined the start of Lamborghini for me. I think these are truly, truly beautiful. Coming beyond that, we've also got a Countach. We've got a Gallardo race car. That's looking a little bit bonkers. That was obviously their first of the V10s, which has more recently spawned the Hurricane, which is right alongside it. On this side, we've got the Cheetah, which is a kind of open version. I think that's the only one, in fact, of the LM002 with the Countach engine. Their first SUV, which has more recently spawned this, the Urus, which of course I drove not all that long ago. And then at the end, we've even got an Aventador Roadster hanging on the wall. Of course, back downstairs then, we have the Hurricane Performante. That is a Hurricane GT3 race car. Then we have the P140 from 1988. That didn't enter into full production. And next to it, something completely different, also from the late 80s, the Lamborghini Formula One car. Now there are only two of these in the world, one of them right here, and the other I saw quite recently in a private collection in Japan, which is really quite cool to have seen them both. Continuing on then, we have the LP670-4 Super Veloce from the Murcia Lago era. Next to that, we have the Espada with its rear seats. Always oh, such an interesting shape, that car. Then we've got the Yurama, and on this side, the Lamborghini Diablo. But at the end, the car 
we're coming to see right now the Lamborghini Veneno. Now this was one of the first of their few offs. They made four in total. This one, the factory prototype, and then three customer cars. Now the customer cars were all distinct in that they had different accents around the bottoms and some of the trim on the interior in red, white, and green. Green, white, and red, I should say, of the Italian flag. But this, again, based on the Aventador, is just the wildest of wild hypercars. It's absolutely crazy. Three coupes of the production cars, also a further nine roadsters they made afterwards but look at the shape of this with this rear fin that comes from the roof scoop on the top back towards that wing which is something more akin to well a GT3 race car but remember this is road legal this can wear a number plate and be driven out and about on the roads 750 horsepower from the V12 it was basically an anniversary celebration almost about 50 years of Lamborghini when this arrived on the scene you just look at it it is sheer bonkers as I said, the rarest of the rare of Lamborghinis right here. One of only four Venenos in the world. The next stop is here inside the Ad Personum studio. Now this is where Lamborghini customers can come down to completely customize their cars, to add bespoke touches or choose special or even bespoke paint colors. Now in a second, I'm gonna sit down to configure my dream Aventador SVJ. Were I lucky enough, to add one to my garage but before we do I want to show you Asphalt 9 Legends and the ability the game has to actually configure cars as well. So we've just unlocked inside the game the Lamborghini Aventador SV Coupe and if I show you this we can actually choose some of the colors that were really available on the actual car. So if we go in here for example and choose our colors you can select from the official colors including Rosso Beer which was the launch color. You can even pinch it, zoom it around and take a proper full look at the car. It's actually a really cool way of seeing it inside the game. And of course, we've got a number of different cars in here, particularly Lamborghinis, for example. If we go back out to the main garage, to all of the cars, you can come along here. We've got the Centenario that we just had a look at inside the museum. Configure in here as well. You can even make it full carbon fiber, full visible carbon fiber, and have a look at this in detail, which looks really very, very cool. In a moment, we will also, he says, let's get back to the cars here, have a look at Tutso Millennio. But before we do that, just to have a look around the studio, we have a particularly nice Hurricane Performante right here with a lot of unique touches on it. So the color is Verde Basilius. And then in addition to that, the Tricolore Italian flag stripe is painted underneath the lacquer with four different colors, the red, white, and green, and also with the black stripe that surrounds that, the accent around the outside. The interior of this car, if I come around to the driver's side, is incredibly nice. Just have a look at the touches they've done in here with the stitching and bits and pieces. So, for example, on the steering wheel, you've got the Tricolore stitching around the steering wheel. You've got the Tricolore stripe there in the center of the seats. The headrest embroideries, you've got green on one side, red on the other. And even the Performante badge is done in the three different colors too. So that is one very nice example of the customization that is possible. And then over here in the corner, is what is called the dealer configurator. So this is what, if you are a customer, you would experience. It's not the online configurator or the one in the game. This is the kind of fully loaded version. Now that is the spec of the car that I drove at the press launch of the SVJ. The color is Rosso Mamiya. But in here, I'm gonna jump through some of these options where we've got loads and loads and loads of colors. The matte colors, the metallic colors. I particularly liked Viola, the color of the car that I drove. Well, the color of the car, the exact color I drove at the launch was Viola Alethia, but it looks pretty similar to that on the screen. Then wheels, for example, in here, we've got the different options. You can choose, I think, in here, the different colors. We can go with the satin bronze, which work very, very nicely against the purple. Brake calipers, let's go with black calipers. I think silver looks a little bit strange against the bronze wheels. And you've got all sorts of things, the carbon fiber, colored suspension components, the satin. We definitely want satin carbon fiber on the car. You can imagine how all of this works. And then, if we close that back up, go back to the main view, you can spin it around and have a pretty good look around this car. How nice is that in that setting? That's pretty much it, actually. That's pretty much how it would be. If I didn't have other cars in that color, purple with bronze wheels, winning spec. I love it. As luck would have it, I've just been told that there might happen to be an SVJ in that spec just around the corner. So the Performante is going to be taken out and the SVJ will come in to take a proper look at it. So let's hear the V10 firing up into life. Oh, 
that noise of the performante as it heads off. Have a quick look at this display unit here with the different colour samples on the wall, paint moulds, different leathers, alcantaras. You can even paint these. So this is the cover that goes over the top of the start-stop button. You can even have those um, done in unique colours as well. That's very, very nice. Centre caps, stitching, steering wheel components, Tricolore flag painted on the door mirrors. This is all really nice. I guess you can hear that then. The noise of what I just described as my dream spec SVJ arriving here inside the studio. Now I have to be careful where the camera points because of course we are inside the Lamborghini factory. There might be secrets around, but look at this. The satin carbon fiber against the bronze wheels. What a lovely, lovely, lovely thing this is. Awesome spec. It's quite surreal that only a moment ago I was configuring the car on the dealer system behind me and now, physically in the studio, we have that exact spec. Nice one, Lamborghini. Normally it would take a while for the car to be built, but let's check out the Ad Personam options then on this SVJ. So the pink colour, of course, is Viola Alethia, which looked so, so good in the sunshine. And you can see from that wall behind, they have literally hundreds of colours that you can choose from satin paints to gloss paints, metallics, pearls, with stripes, with different accents, you name it. Now on the inside of this car, we have a few additional options as well. So let's just have a look in here. You can see the white accents across the dashboard with the leather striping there, the pinstripe uh, piping that you have running across here too. Around the seat, this is all via ad personam, as is this individual uh, purple color for the shape inside the seat inserts to match with the exterior. But that looks really quite nice to be honest. Also like the SVJ logo that it has on the seat itself. So this is a very, very nice spec car. It has to be said that is dreamy right there. I like it an awful, awful lot. Please Lamborghini, I'd love one of these. Now it is time to visit Lamborghini's Centro Stile, the design studio, where we can take a look at the Terzo Millennio. Let's head on in and see the covers coming off. Here it is then, as the covers are pulled back on the Terzo Millennio, the car that you can actually play right now in the Asphalt 9 Legends game. But let's explore this incredible machine. So this is Lamborghini's vision of the future. Not today, not tomorrow, but further afield, a fully electric hypercar. It maintains some pretty distinct Lamborghini lines. So like the Countach and the Aventador, you have this one single curve that runs the full length over the top of the car. You've also got the styling cues with the Ys that you'll find all around it. So the running lights that you have here at the front, the spokes that you'll find on the wheels, each one of those splitting out towards the end, also coming around towards the back, the tail lights that you have back here. The design is crazy, it's so low. The car is only one meter and one centimeter tall, with the occupants sitting very much in a racing position. That's the idea of how it would work. But what's particularly clever about this is not only that it would, in theory, be all electric, but it also has a self-healing carbon fiber skin. So the bodywork can self-heal itself, which is just I mean, a ridiculous idea for the future. Have a look back here, the illumination again, the Y shapes that you have coming through the rear and also up there. Your batteries would be right down towards the bottom, but it's so very open. You can see right the way through, all the way out the front. You've got the fins for the active aerodynamics all around the car as well. And have a look through the back here. Just look at this teardrop style cabin in the center of the car, allowing the airflow to come all the way back and around it. That could potentially be the future. It also has the 63 designation right here, Lamborghini being founded in 1963. So that is potentially the future for what we'll be driving. But right now, you can play with this car in the game, which I just so happen to have right here. So we can load it up, playing with the Terzo Millennio, which we've preset here, and literally play with that car on Asphalt 9 right now. So let's load it up and just check out the graphics on this. It's truly insane how good it is. It feels like not all that long ago these were graphics you got out of a complete games console uh, system on your television. And here we are playing, but I am playing one-handed, so I might not do the best possible job of this, but here we go. Let's see what we can do. It is really, really bizarre that I am currently playing with the car that is sitting on the ground in front of me. And we've just gone for a barrel roll, but we're good. We're good. We're rolling here, people. Oh dear. Let's not do that, but we've self-healed. We're back on the go again. Right, let me pause this because I just want to take in this again for a moment. The Terzo Millennio. That's pretty cool. 
This is also really very, very cool. I have had a pretty legendary trip, to be honest today, visiting the home of Lamborghini, being able to take a look at so much, the crossover from the game Asphalt 9 Legends in our visits to Ad Personum to configure my own SVJ, and also, he says, as an event door. Roadster goes right past to configure my own SVJ coupe and then also to head over to the Centro Stile to check out the Terzo Millennio and what a vision for the future that is. And off it goes again, joined this time by an Urus. So we've seen the Terzo Millennio, the Veneno, we've seen the uh, Sesto Elemento and also the Centenario. I think the only one of the one-offs we didn't see was the Reventon and the Aventador J. But those are Lamborghini's most rare and truly Sounds good, doesn't it? Truly exclusive vehicles. Amazing to see them all here today. So a big thanks to everyone involved in today's visit. I've had an amazing time. And of course, a big thanks to you guys, as always, for watching. I appreciate your support. But that's it for this time. I will see you again very soon. Cheers.